Welcome to another deep dive edition of the Chicks on the Right podcast. Today is going to be really, really, really interesting because a woman reached out to us who we had not heard of, uh, and I suspect that many people in our audience will not have heard of her either, but she has had a recent interesting opportunity to talk with Candace Owens directly on her own podcast about the whole Kanye anti-Semitic hullabaloo. And so the name of our guest is Hanala Felig Harrell, and she is the host of the Weekly Squeeze podcast. And so Hanala, welcome to our show. Thank very, you. very excited to hear more about you, your podcast, and then we'll jump right into the whole uh, discussion that you had with Candace because that was fascinating. Tell us about totally. your podcast. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, I'm a Florida girl, born and raised, grew up on Miami Beach. My parents still live there. Proud American. Um, you know, did well in school, loved literature, loved the arts, was always interested in music. And eventually I got into the music scene. I'm a singer for Jewish women only. I only sing for women, um, mostly because that's actually the Jewish law that men don't listen to women sing. So as an Orthodox Jew, that's something that I've kept all these years. It hasn't stopped me from succeeding. I have eight albums. My music is really well known. I've traveled a lot over the years and I've had some amazing opportunities. And I have a pretty decent social media following because of the whole music scene. About five years ago, we moved to Israel, me and my four children and my husband. I dragged him back kicking and screaming. (laughs) He was born here in Israel. He's like, I want to be here in America. I'm like, I'm sorry, my friend. We're going to have to do, we're going to have to take one for the team. I think it's going to be better for our kids to move to Israel. And the truth is, I lived in, um, in, in Hollywood, Florida, and there was kind of this like, strange um, change happening in the air where I would go into Publix, which is our grocery store, and I would see women in hijabs and then the Trump supporters because, you know, the north, the nor- more north you go in Florida, the more red the state becomes. And I kind of felt as a Jewish person, uh, like I was losing my, my, my sense of self, kind of. I couldn't find my place anymore in Florida. And I just thought, you know, I don't know if, if America is right for me. I really don't know if America is right for me. I love this country. It's been great to me and my family and to my grandparents, but I, I, I'm looking for adventure and I want to really um, connect to the, the country that I'm living in. And I, and I want to invest that energy in Israel. So I picked up, we packed up, we moved to Israel. And part of that process was recording my eighth album, which I, you know, song about my experience and how inspired I was to move to Israel. And then when I came here, I started sharing on Instagram all my adventures as I explored the land. And I became more popular for being so passionate about Israel and my lifestyle here as an American singer, doing something that a lot of girls only dream of, or a lot of my friends only dream of. About six months ago, it dawned on me that I can have my own podcast. And if I have a podcast, I don't have to use my voice for women only because men can hear my speaking voice. And this is an opportunity for me to have finally a larger audience. So I started podcasting. I started a Jewish entertainment news show. And I talk a lot about Jewish music and I lot of talk about Jewish culture because that's something I'm passionate about. My husband's in the music business as well. And it really took off. I have a, a top five Jewish show practically every week. I got myself a cute little mug here. And I'm like, you know, I don't know if you can see it, but um, I'm all, you know, I'm all in the podcast zone. So this whole thing with Kanye starts, and if you guys can jump in or interrupt me, because I could just, you know, I'm a podcast host now. I could talk for hours. (laughs) Right, right. (laughs) So this whole Kanye West thing comes up. It's the last day of the holiday of Sukkot. Now, in Israel, we keep the holiday for one day, but abroad, the holiday is kept for two days. So Ben Shapiro is going to synagogue for two days in a row. Here in Israel, the synagogue, the holiday is over. And I'm on Twitter and I see Kanye's DEF CON 3 tweet. And I have no one to tell because everyone I know is keeping observing the holiday and not picking up their phones for another 24 hours. Oh my gosh. Because okay. uh, there's a huge time difference. So you're experiencing all of this ahead of everyone else here. So I had to wait 24 hours and then Ben Shapiro got online like two days later until he tweeted about it. So I'm thinking, what, what, what is he even talking about, obviously? What is this DEF CON 3? My first reaction was, okay, DEF and Jews in the same tweet, probably not a good thing. Right. Like that was just like a given. Mm-hmm. So I'm watching this whole thing unfold 
And slowly but surely, it, it kind of just explodes. And mm -hmm. as things are getting more and more heated, my social media peers, you know, my Jewish girlfriends who are running their different influencer accounts are getting more and more frustrated with Candace Owens and Ben Shapiro. Like Kanye is just tweeting left and right and there's complete silence from the whole Daily Wire network. And when you're Jewish, like you're clutching at straws. Like, does, is, are, are we dreaming? Is, is anyone going to stand up and, and, and push back at, at Kanye? Nobody is paying attention to us on Instagram. We're all these small little accounts. But then Candace starts replying to people's Instagram messages. It's the strangest thing ever. All my friends are like, she replied to me in my DMs and she starts blocking them. Okay. And there's like this whole thing going on where Candace is clearly frustrated on her phone, replying to all these girls who are saying, Hey, are you going to call out Kanye? Are you also an anti-Semite? And then she takes a screenshot of Rachel Boteach. And if you guys don't know who she is, her father was Michael Jackson's rabbi. So okay. back in the day, Michael Jackson was walking around with this rabbi, and he became really famous because of that. Not Michael Jackson, the rabbi. <laughs> Michael Jackson was, was famous without the rabbi. Right. <laughs> so this rabbi becomes really famous. He also wrote the book Kosher Sex. So he is very popular for being a provocative, you know, figure. I wouldn't say he's my rabbi. Um, he, he likes to, like, take out ads in the New York Times, and, you know, he's very in-your-face. So his daughter is a social media influencer. And Candace takes a screenshot of her where she's saying, Can, where, you know, this girl, this rabbi's daughter is saying, Candace, don't mess with the Jews, you know? And she puts it on Twitter and says, for the last two weeks, I've been dealing with constant threat from the Jewish com constant threats from the Jewish community. And she puts this girl wearing a headscarf, she's 23 years old, on her Twitter account. And I was just like, and all hell broke loose. All the Jewish gals were like, are you kidding me? You are feeling threatened by us? We're the ones sitting here trying to figure out what's going on. You're Candace Owens. You're wearing a White, uh, white Lives t-shirt with, with, with Kanye at your opening of your movie or whatever it was. Like, it just felt very surreal. Right. So wow. I got on, yeah. Uh, so I get on social media and I make a reel. And I said, hey, let's have a reasonable conversation. I don't believe that Candace is an anti-Semite. And I don't think it's fair to call her one. She's a smart, intelligent woman. She speaks up, you know, about important issues. She's well thought out. Let's give her benefit of the doubt. Candace, will you marry me? <laughs> will you come on my podcast? <laughs> so were you surprised when that she agreed to? Like She what? replied within an hour. I'll, I intend to come on your show. I'm in London. I intend to come on your show. And I was like, say what? <laughs> I was no, like, are you kidding? Happen. I only kind of half meant it. I'm kind of scared of you, Candace. <laughs> Yeah, I will say though, I mean, you just, like it was great. It's it's if you listen to the the podcast because I mean I listened to it, it's you did great I, the, and the discussion. It sounds like you guys had been friends for ever. Well, <laughs> uh, that's listen. That's something that I thought was very important because I figured no matter what she's going through, she is a mom like I am. You know, she is a conservative like I am. We we have to find some common ground here. Let's yeah. see what happens if we have this conversation. Anyway, so. The first thing she does, God bless her, is, you know, I send her an email. Can we do it on Sunday just to kind of secure the date? And she replies, how about now, question mark? I swear to you. How about now? It's 11 wow. o'clock at, at night here in Israel. I'm in my pajamas, okay? I got <laughs> off my couch like my pants were on fire. I was in front of my computer in 30 seconds waiting for Candace Owens. And oh then God. she disappears. And then she disappears. I'm sitting for three hours and no <gasps> reply, okay? <gasps> And oh then, so you waited nothing. till like one in the morning? Oh, so you waited till like two in the morning. Two in the morning. Oh, I, was, I was, don't ask. And I was like, my, my, you know, I was like, oh gosh. Then her assistant Savannah messages me on WhatsApp the next day. Let's set up a time. How's 1.30? Whatever. Fine. We have a time. We're doing this. I sit down in front of the computer. I call my mom and my dad. I'm like, I have this life-changing opportunity. Candace <laughs> Owens is going to be at my show. And they're like, you gotta tell her, you gotta stand up for the Jewish people, you gotta tell her that her, that her you know, that Kanye's an asshole, and have all these Jews telling me what to say, you know. So I mean, it's, there's like there was there was definite sparring. Like I mean, you guys definitely you went back and forth, but it, I felt like it, it you you knew each other when you, you know. That's why when I listened to it, I thought, gosh, th th these two ladies had they known each other before? Because you had that. 
sort of a friendly banter at first that seemed almost like you, you know, were familiar with one another. And then it well, was, her, okay, we're, okay, we're going to throw down now. Well, her <laughs> headspace, listen, her headspace, we were in the same headspace. I was very yeah. frustrated. She was very frustrated. But right. I did not expect her to come on the show at her set. So she shows up at her set wearing her red leather jacket, and there's clearly other people in the room filming her and fixing her microphone. So right away that set like a a debate like setting and I don't debate. I don't I didn't even go to college. You know, I I'm not, you know, I, I'm I'm not looking for these intellectual, like you said, this sparring. And she was like all forces blazing. I mean she was so, so furious. She was furious at this Rachel Boteach. She said that her behavior was demonic. She was furious that she had been called an anti Semite. She was furious that we were um, assuming that she didn't, you know, that she didn't care about what we were saying and that she's a bad person. And then, most surprisingly, it just became all about the the, the, the black issue. And I was like, yeah. what? Well, hold up. Your whole spiel, Candace, is that you don't think black people are victims. You think that black people need to get their, you know, get their crap together and not play the role of victims. And now you're saying that we can't be upset because the black people's voices are being silenced. It, that's it was actually that's one thing that, that really I, like my head was spinning when I was listening to that part of your conversation, because that that was my thought as well. Like I thought her whole thing has always been about stop victimizing yourself, stop believing that you are less than simply because you're fed that narrative over and over again. We're smarter than that. We're, you know what I mean? And so for her to then turn around and say, this is the, the black people right now are suffering and need to be heard in this moment. I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> it, it was, it felt very circular. And I, and I felt for like in, for when, listening to you, I was like, well, damn, I, she is really, she's pushing back on Candace in a way that I was super impressed by. Only yeah. because, full disclosure, I'm a little bit afraid of her. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, she is someone that you, that is very tough to tangle with. And so, for people who haven't listened to your episode with her yet, ha I think it needs to be said that there were times where it felt very contentious. And right. you held your ground in yeah, a way yeah. that I was very proud of you for even yeah, not knowing you. you at that point well, i second you. that i totally you. second that yeah because i i was like wow she did a i would not have wanted to be in that position let's right. put it that way right and, so and i we, and we and we fight with a lot of people <laughs> lot of people. <laughs> like, i'm not scared to get down and dirty but with candace uh you know well right. i'll tell you the truth i felt there was a lot riding on my shoulders because i had put myself out there and I had told my peers that I'm going to prove to you that she's not an anti-Semite. And she's not. She's not an anti-Semite. That's not right. what yeah. you... And I don't think... I'll tell you the truth. I hate to... And I said this on the show. I don't think Kanye is either anti-Semitic. I just think he's erratic. And he's engaging right. in behavior that's very dangerous. My grandmother was a Holocaust survivor. And I hate to use that card. But the fact is... And she just died exactly a year ago today at the age of 95 years old, severely traumatized by the Holocaust. I grew up in the shadow of the Holocaust. She had 10 children. All of her children were traumatized with her. <laughs> and, and, and despite the fact that we grew up, you know, loved and cared for, the shadow of the Holocaust was definitely part of our lives. Mm -hmm. And for her, to, um, for her to suggest that this, all of this stuff is just kind of, um, you know, it, it's, it's, I, what it comes down to, and I just want to make it like really clear for people listening. I wake up in the morning, I live here in the land of Israel, and I send my children off to school, and I worry. I worry for their safety. I worry yeah. for their safety because I live in the Middle East, and I live in a very, very um, contentious part of the world where we are surrounded by people, Arabs, who are sworn enemies of the Jewish people. And we're at a point that I look over to America, which is my home, and I hear more and more how we have it coming, and we deserve it, and we are the oppressors, and the Palestinian people are the victims. And it's, it couldn't be further from the truth. So at this point, I wake up in the morning, I'm facing Palestinian um, anti-Semitism, we are facing uh, woke anti-Semitism, and now thanks to Kanye, we are facing African-American anti-Semitism. And, in, and, and, and unlike all the other groups, you know, you have gay and you have straight, you have black and you have white, you have men and you have women. 
the Jews, we get it from all sides. We literally right. get it from all sides. And it just felt like it's not time for the Kanye Candace pity party. You guys are the ones successful. You guys are the ones sitting pretty. And I am the one who's worried that the words that come out of Kanye's mouth affect the safety of my children's life. And I'm not trying to be melodramatic. This is yeah. the reality. Anti-Semitism is through the roof. Vandalization of, of, of desecration of, of cemeteries and lasers on, on buildings that say Kanye is right. And uh, forget about even online. I'm talking about people being beat up in the streets, um, um, swastikas on, on buildings, on walls, graffiti of, of, of Jews hanging, anti, whatever, hangmen and all this horrible stuff. And it's, it's you know, anti-Semitism is through the roof. And at how some did, point... How did, can you, for the people that haven't heard your episode with her, how did she defend him to you? In, in what way did she try to rationalize or justify, if she did, how did she defend him and, and her relationship with him to this day? She said, I am his friend. I am his friend, and that is my bottom line. However, I did say clearly that the things that he said were not okay. I, she kept re you know, gurgitating that same thing. I did say the things he said were not okay. And I also am a victim because you, you know, BuzzFeed pulled out a, a Hitler clip that I once said and used that against me. And now this is the second time. So fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. I'm not going to be a victim this time. I'm not going to be called an anti-Semite. And I was just like, but, but why is this about you? How is this about you? Why can't you just say, you know what? I totally get it. I love Kanye. He's a little erratic. Sometimes he says things he doesn't mean. I, all I could say is from what I know of him, he has a really big heart. And maybe we should just cut him some slack and see how it plays out. But she refused mm -hmm. to say any of that. It was just like, well, you know, he is a victim of the Jewish people in his life that screwed him. And because of that, he's feeling very not heard. And therefore, he needs to express himself to the 38 million people who follow him about how he feels about Jewish people. And then it just went on and on and on. And then I asked her, I said, Candace, I don't understand. Feel, feel the temperature in the room. Why would you tweet this week, out of all weeks, a video of a guy named something, Limor Cohen, an executive in Hollywood who creates rap, who produces rap music, hip hop music. Why would you um, tweet out a video clip of him admitting that he does it basically to put food on the table and he doesn't care about the impact that the music has on the black community? Obviously, that's a very you know, that's some reprehensible behavior. We're not proud of that. But I can tell you in my Jewish community, we call out bad actors. We called out um, of Jeffrey Epstein and we called out Bernie Madoff and we called out Anthony Weiner and we call out any, any, any creeps and pedophiles and bad actors. We don't say, no, they're our own. We're going to protect them. We don't, I don't want to, you know, other religions might do that, but the Jewish people, we, we, we're the first ones to excommunicate and to say this is not okay, and to protect our children, and we have Torah values, and we believe in God, and we, you know, and certain things are just not acceptable. Right. And, and, and there was, there was also that notion that was brought up that because he is yay, that anything that he says is magnified. That was also brought up in the podcast. Mm -hmm. Which, you know, there's a flip side to that because he is yay, everything is magnified. So it makes everything he says I, I, elevated. Right. So you have a, a, a responsibility when you're in a, a position like that. You a hundred percent, a hundred percent. And so does Candace. And so does Candace. And what really made me upset and, uh, and I'm going to just, you know, I'm not going to carry on forever because I respect what she's doing and she's done a lot of good things. And I appreciate that she did come on the show and we ended off nicely. And I hope that if she ever wanted to reach out to, you know, her old Jewish friend, she could message me again. But <laughs> um but the fact of the matter is that she went off on Kim Kardashian this week about the whole Balenciaga thing. And I was like, do you not see yourself? You are raging at Kim Kardashian to condemn Balenciaga for an ad campaign that might be pedophilia. Don't get me wrong. It's gross. It might be pedophilia. There might be something really sinister happening there. You're railing against her to condemn them. And it, and, and you won't condemn Kanye. And his behavior just keeps getting increasingly worse. And mm -hmm. I saw how um, livid she was and how adamant she was that when something needs to be spoken about, it should be spoken about. But when it came to Kanye, well, she's my best friend. I don't know. Maybe, maybe Kanye's, maybe Kim's best friend is, is, is the, the photographer of Balenciaga. I don't know where her alliances lie. 
Yeah. Yeah. It, that, and that's a that is a whole other story. And of course, now there's this whole meeting that Trump had with Kanye, with Nick Fuentes, with um, I don't even remember the other person that was at that. Yiannopoulos. Somebody with My- Milo. It was Milo. No, no, no. At Mar-a-Lago. I don't was Milo at Mar-a-Lago. I think, it was I some think woman. Milo was there. Oh, it was a woman. Oh, it was some woman. Yeah. So that is also in a whole issue in and of in and of itself. And again, I don't think that tr- I think Trump was set up. I do. I think this is again um, Kanye's um, the, the behavior that comes from this. You know, I can do whatever I want. There's no rules for me, and you know, everybody's just gonna have to let me do my thing and revolve around my little or revolve around my orbit here. There's a, v- a very um, um, there's like a I don't know what the word is, but he just, he doesn't really seem to care about the carnage he leaves behind by the things he does and says, you know, he thinks he makes up with it with his charm and with his, you know, his talk about God. And again, it's confusing. It is confusing because sometimes you see him and you just think, yeah, he's kind of cute. You know, I I get why people like him. And then sometimes he says things that are just so outrageous. So Trump also, I don't think that Trump is an anti-Semite. I don't think he could be an anti-Semite. I never had, I voted for him. I mean, I have a book right here, Trump and the Jews. I was, mm-hmm. I'm a big fan. But at the same time, you know, I'm on social media interviewing Candace, getting all this heat from people who are like, why would you have an anti-Semite on your show? And Trump has Fuentes, who's like the scraping the bottom of the barrel. Serious. Like, it doesn't oh get God. any. <laughs> and you're having dinner with him. And I'm just like, you're selling me out. Like, if you're having dinner with this guy... And, and it just makes everything look worse. You make Kanye look worse. You make Candace look worse. And now you made me look worse. So for me, the whole thing is personal. <laughs> well, and, and it's, you're right, though, because but at no time, you know, when the backlash immediately happened with with Trump and, and being in a dinner with those people, with Nick Fuentes, he got a lot of heat for that. And then his answer to it was to say, well, I didn't know him. OK, well, you, you probably do now. And so. You're the the question is, why didn't he immediately come out and say, I know who he is now and I am horrified that I shared space with him like that. (laughs) Where's the to your point earlier about Candace? Where is the condemnation? Where is like the super forceful? That guy is the scum of the earth. And I cannot believe that Kanye put me in a position where I had dinner with him. That's yeah. anybody. I don't understand why we that's all know. Not his we all response. know Trump doesn't like to, re, to like to apologize, but I just want to make right. something really clear for everyone listening. Uh, you know, as a Jewish person, okay, as a Jewish American, I am concerned and I am fearful, and I'm not again being melodramatic. I'm saying this because unfortunately, I've learned enough history. I spent 12 years learning Jewish history as a, as a child. My grandfather was a rabbi on both sides. Like I said, my grandmother was a Holocaust survivor. For me, the Jewish experience is very, very real. I live here in, in Israel, in the Middle East, because I'm committed to my people, to my country, to my land. I'm also a proud American. Don't get me wrong. I, I, you know, I have very strong connections to my Americanism, and I would never throw that away. I, I want to I be proud of both sides of who I am, my Jewishness mm-hmm. and my American side. Um, but, but, but this constant conversation, how somehow the Jews are responsible for everything that goes wrong, it's just like it, it couldn't be further from the truth. In, in my world, I see it so differently. I see that we contribute to our communities. We, we are God-fearing people for the most part. I'm not saying everyone's perfect, but for the most part, we do strive to be... To, to live more elevated lives. You know, we were, were always there for minorities, for, um, for, for, for all those groups that, that, that need support, Black Lives Matter and gay movement. My brother's a lawyer in, in, in Boston. He's, he's a complete liberal. I fight with him all day long. But we're <laughs> very passionate about supporting minorities and oppressed groups. A, because we're compassionate, and B, because we've been there. The Jews right. have been there. We get how it feels to be a minority, and we want things to be. We, you know, the, the description of America as a melting pot is one of my favorite uh, analogies because we're all these different types of metals, and we go into a pot, and we merge into this really strong iron. But Kanye West comes, and he shuts off the fire, and then we're just clunking mm-hmm. around, a bunch of you know pieces of metal banging up against each other. It's not fair for him to do that. We are trying as hard as possible to live side by side with our American brothers and sisters in peace, 
without any issues. And unfortunately, Kanye has magnified, uh, you know, something that's that's that the, the that we have to, we have to deal yeah. with now. Yeah, I will say though, it does make me sad though that you don't live here anymore. I mean, I like it, I, it's like I I will like I I'll be happy if I ever visit there, and then you will pick me up at the airport. But like I. <laughs> Because I have a friend now in Israel, but like it, but it does make me sad. Like when you said at the beginning that you don't recognize, like you don't, you don't feel like you fit in, and like you know, you go to the grocery store, you go to your Publix, and you don't feel like you fit. Like that made my heart hurt. I don't like well, that. I, yeah, because you know, we, I was thinking today, if I if I don't, let's say I decided I don't want to be a Republican anymore. Like, where, 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 what do I, what do I do? I can't hang out with the squad. I can't hang out with the, the neo-Nazis. Like, I'm stuck between a rock and a hard place. You can hang at with least us. It, well, sure. That's why I'm here. That's why okay. I am here. All right. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. There's, You know what? There are so many amazing people. There are. And I'm not saying that Candace is not a great girl in many ways. And I understand that she's passionate about what she's passionate. And I do understand her relationship. She's stuck with, you know, on the one hand with Ben Shapiro and then Kanye and her husband and Parler. Who the heck knows what's really going on there? And I, mean, I really do believe in the goodness of people. And I do believe that people try their best to be good. But, you know, sometimes we make funny choices because, yeah. you know, our egos are involved or or money or just things, you know, that are not so godly. And uh, well, I, 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 wanted to, I wanted to ask you, too. And I'm, I'm looking for it now. I'm sorry. Oh, here it is. So I was looking at your Twitter feed and there was I, I was going to ask you what your take was on Candace's. Now, like how this all plays with her relationship with the Daily Wire and Ben Shapiro's It's a great question. Great question. Because I see that on November 27th, so two days ago, I see that Ben was fighting with Kanye and there was a tweet that is now deleted of Kanye. So I don't know what Kanye said. I can see your retweet of Ben's response to him which says, sadly, you have trashed yourself. You didn't need my help. It wasn't me. It wasn't the Jews. It was just you. And then after you retweeted that, you wrote, if I worked for Ben Shapiro and Kanye West was my friend, I would either quit my job or quit my friendship. Candace, you are officially in no man's land. So what did Kanye tweet that's now gone? Can you give us that? Oh, he, he tweeted something hard. He wrote that, um, like something like kind of brushing off the interaction he had with Ben earlier and then wrote something like, you got to be, you, you got to keep your enemas close. Instead of writing enemies, he called them an enema. What? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And everyone was like, say what? And then there were some suggestions that maybe Milo wrote it. And I was just like, you're calling um, Ben Shapiro an enema now? Like, okay, that's yeah. where we're at? And how can Candace wake up in the morning and go work with Ben and with Jeremy uh, at Boring and, and and not have to discuss these things? I mean, this behavior is appalling. I feel like, I feel like you know when your parents are fighting and you're the kid in the room and you're just like, guys, stop fighting. Like, I feel very insecure. <laughs> like, come on, pull it together. Totally. And she it's... even said on her show today, she said, well, I don't care that you guys think that Things are, un uh, you know, uncomfortable between me and Kanye and Ben. Those are private conversations that I'm going to be having with them. And I'll let you guys know and I'll fill you in when I'm ready. Kind of like mm. just because you think that things are uh, on shaky ground doesn't mean that they are. And I'm like, hello, you have some. You, you, we, we're, we're sitting here on Spilkas. We're sitting here listening to every episode, every word, every tweet, trying to figure out what is the frame of mind of y'all that we've been listening to and following all these years and you're just like yeah we're working things out in the back like hello it's, it's very interesting the dynamic has got to be so i know a dynamic <laughs> <laughs> indeed wow. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah. Oh my God. Like quite Goodness. a story. Quite yeah. a story. It is, it is really quite a story. And I mean, I it, I commend you on on just you know I don't I don't want to say going toe to toe with her because that sounds so corny and stupid, you know. But you you did ho hold your own, and that mm. I, I mean it sounds so condescending when I'm like I commend you for that, you know. But I mean that's something that I wouldn't have done. I just wouldn't have done it. Right. Well, you know what? I, I take risks. Even reaching out to you girls, I saw your show. I'm like, those are girls I like to talk to. And you guys message me back. And here I am. And I think part of being successful in any realm is taking risks. But at the same time, you have to maintain your standards. These are things yeah. that I believe in. 
These are things I don't believe in. And if my friend does something that I am not comfortable with, you know, my I, I, could, I could stay loyal to my friend, but I can call out their mistakes. And mm-hmm. a real friend, if Kanye was a real friend of Candace, she would say, you know what? He would say, you know what? I get the position you're in. This is your livelihood. You work for the Daily Wire. I get it. But it seems to me like, you know, there's certain things she's not, she she can't say. Or that, yeah. or maybe she doesn't believe in it. I don't know. You know, or there's still gorgeous. a lot to be discovered. Right. It's maybe a tangled just... web, man. It is <laughs> so really, yeah. tangling. And we're so here for it. And we're here for it. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Yes. And, and listen, totally. I, and, and when it comes to the rise of anti-Semitism, you're absolutely right about it. It's all over the world. I mean, this is something, yeah. this is absolutely real. It's happening everywhere. We see yeah. it. All you got to do is read the news. It's happening yeah. everywhere. So this and is I just want to, I just want to say one thing though, while I have everyone's attention about anti-Semitism, you know, there's this, sometimes I, I see so much of it online that I'll see like Hasidic Jews here in Israel and I'll look at them, like I'll, I'll turn my nose at them. I really will. Like it's even starting to affect my psyche. And I have to wow. remind myself just because they look different than I do. Just because they are wearing these traditional clothings that they used to wear in the shtetl, it doesn't mean that they're bad people. It really doesn't. Most of them are wonderful people. They're very different. And sure, they're very insular. And, you know, there's issues in every community. But considering what's going on in the world, in China and in Africa and in the Middle East, you know, a couple of Hasidic Jews over here using their kosher phones with their side curls are the least of your issues. Leave them alone. They're not bothering you. They're not asking for much. Try not to beat them up in the streets. Let them do their thing. They're not invading your public schools. They're not shooting, you know, shooting up each other in the street. There's no yeah. drug epidemic in their communities. Kind of like, just just chill. Just chill. <laughs> That's a good message That's for everybody. Great. That's Just great advice. Chill. Just, Just chill, chill, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> that needs to be on a t-shirt. Yeah. Just chill. Just chill. <laughs> With like the side curls. With the side <laughs> curls. They're sure. Perfect. Let's embrace the side curls. It. Why not? You can make a shirt. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Yeah. Well, Hanala, we, this has been fascinating, and I knew it, it would really be. Has. We both knew it would be. We were very, very excited to have you tell us about uh, all the juicy details with that conversation <laughs> that you had with Candace and just where you are, where you, you, what your thinking was going into it, what your thinking was coming out of it. And so this has been really, really fascinating, and I know our listeners are going to appreciate hearing from you too. They, everybody should check out the Weekly Squeeze podcast. Um, where can people find you? Oh, just Google Hanala. There's only one. <laughs> and also, you have a beautiful singing voice. If people are interested Thank in that, you. too. You, Thank seriously, you. Seriously. You Thank have a you. Voice. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you <laughs> so much, guys. Thank well. you, Miriam. Thank you, Daisy. You guys are awesome. Keep up the good fight. You're doing good stuff Thank here. Thank you. 